Hi, everybody. Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. As you can see, Manny Pacheco is the guest today. We're going to talk about old films. We're going to talk about Hollywood history. But first, Art, you and mm. I were talking about mm. guilty pleasures, movies that we loved that really weren't, uh, you know, they weren't great movies, but we love them anyway. Movies that are probably not, sorry, Manny, movies that may never win an award, right? right. All right, what's your favorite guilty pleasure? Oh, well, top of my head, Sleepless in Seattle. The, Love little, that. the little kid who longs to, oh, well, great. Of course, you know, you had all the good players in it, but Sleepless in Seattle. That would, that a would romance, be... a romance to die for. Yeah. Manny, yeah. does that fit the category of guilty oh, pleasure? Oh, popcorn movie. Oh, absolutely. That's just, a, you know, that's a, what they call a date movie. Yes. You know, you're okay. going to go out on a date. You're going to see a safe movie guaranteed to cuddle and watch and have some popcorn, maybe some uh, bonbons. Uh, yeah, raisinettes. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. That definitely fills the bill. Now, before we came on, uh, John and I were arguing whether Barbie falls into this category. Right. I think it does. Originally. I think the whole intention was it for it to be a big, fun kind of movie it's just that the director Greta Gerwig was going to have none of that she wanted to make it an important movie <laughs> with a message I think she changed the whole uh, idea of the genre and now you know it could actually win some Oscars that's not to say guilty pleasure movies don't win awards they do sometimes I think Marty is a great example of that but um, for the most part they're not considered good, good point I uh, let's not get caught up on Barbie because it really is it's it's beyond, I mean, they, they were, Greta Gerwig was shooting for a lot of Oscars. It's mm. politically correct. It's art direction is perfect. It's, it's perfect. got humor aimed at multiple generations. Yeah. Uh, the acting I thought was wonderful. It, it's not a, it's not a, an also ran film that happens to grab an audience, you know? No. And, and, and John, did you mention that in its first three weeks, it did over a billion dollars in, in box office. Yeah, that would that would help get it. A, <laughs> uh, that that really does. But yeah. I mean, if you're talking about just the aesthetic of what's designed to win an Oscar, it's not Oppenheimer. No, you don't movie, think so? No, I think Op. Look, Oppenheimer was designed to win awards. I mean, it's an epic, three hours long. Right. Top stars, although there are top stars in Barbie as well. But you ask, you ask, why is Barbie making a million dollars and Oppenheimer is coming in second or third? It's simple for me. Um, Oppenheimer is a scientist. Yeah. Barbie is the bomb. Yeah. Okay. The field I'm, 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 I'm gonna, that was a joke gonna... nobody got. No, <laughs> yeah. Oppenheimer, you know what Oppenheimer is? It's a three-part made-for-TV special. No, I think it's Even a, Hey, look, no, it had my, excuse me, excuse me. This is from a guy who loves Matt Damon, who probably played a terrific general in yeah. in, in in this movie. But well, I, I I've seen enough on TV about Oppenheimer that the uh, I haven't seen it in the movies yet, so I reserve. And I'm sure it's very well made. But it, to me, I've seen so many versions of it on TV already in two or three part series. So that's how it affected me. Well, and you're, you're going to be pleasantly surprised, but we're getting off topic. Now, for me, a guilty pleasure, rom-com, whatever you want to call it. I think I've mentioned this before. John always agrees with me when I say Adventures in Babysitting is my example. Yep. It, it just yep. doesn't get better. And I think in the larger sense, anything that was made by John Hughes. Yeah. You know, for uh, uh, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah. Um, uh, a pretty in Pink, The Breakfast Club, St. Sure. Elmo's Fire, uh, all of those films were guilty pleasures. Yeah. And, but it made stars of a, of a lot of actors. I mean, the entire Brat Pack, you know, all became stars for, for much of the 80s. And sure. uh, Matthew Broderick continues to be a star on Broadway. So, I mean, they were guilty pleasures, but they, but they also uh, laid the ground, groundwork for plenty of, of uh, much stardom. So, so there's yeah. that. I, I think I think the the basic requirement for a guilty pleasure is that it's not a heavy. Uh, it doesn't try to be an important film. Mm -hmm. It doesn't 
try too hard to be a feature film, uh, for, you know, for the ages. And yet it has lasting impact on everybody who watches it, even if it's just an oh, aren't they sweet, you know, <laughs> which a lot of the rom-coms have. And, and all the John Hughes films are like that. Well, you know, back in the 30s and 40s, um, a lot of the um, a lot of the movie studios would put together quick films. In other words, they would, they would put a series of films together. Right. And those were done cheaply and they were done quickly. Mm -hmm. um, some of them began as A-list. I mean, one of them for sure. Andy Hardy was always considered important. So I wouldn't necessarily put Andy Hardy in that mm -hmm. group. Uh, Dr. Kildare probably was in that group. Henry Aldridge was in that group. Uh, the Sherlock Holmes, The Hounds of the Baskerville and The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes were A-list films, but then they went to a different, they went from a 20th Century Fox to Universal, and then they were made as B-pictures or Guilty yeah. Pleasures, or and, and they were made very very quickly. I think they made 11 pictures in two years. Yeah. They were barely an hour, an hour and five minutes long. Yeah. You know the Char the Charlie Chan films were made that way. I mean, so the when all the all the Western serials that of the, yes. you know that were done in the late forties, early fifties mm -hmm. that would end up on television later were cheaply made. Uh, Hopalong Cassidy was a good yes. example. They were made on the cheap, and those were what you call guilty pleasures. Sure. Can you so think I, of Can you think of any uh, guilty pleasure films or near guilty pleasure films uh, that ever won Best Picture? Or best actor or actress. I, I really think Marty is the best example. That was a very small picture mm -hmm. that was based on a teleplay. Yeah. Uh, uh, it was written for television. Rod Steiger played the butcher. And they brought in, I mean, I don't know what they expected, but they bring in Ernest Borgnine, who at that time only played heavies. He had just finished doing Bad Day at Black Rock as a heavy. And by the way, fifth bill. I mean, he's not even in the top five billing. Yeah, and he's and right before that he's he's in and from here to eternity again lowly billed as the heavy, he's the one that kills Frank Sinatra, uh, spoiler alert, and 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 then they came <laughs> into star, in Marty. So I don't yeah. know what they expected of that. All I know is that this little movie, this very small movie, right. takes the, the 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 nation by storm. Wins Best Picture. Ernest Borgnine wins Best Actor. And by the way, when he won, he beat Spencer Tracy in Bad Day at Black Rock. Wow. So, I wow. mean, that's interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great example of a small movie yeah. that ends up winning. I think another example might be Annie Hall. Remember, mm -hmm. before Annie Hall, Woody Allen was making just goofy comedy. Yes. I mean, really, he was not making anything of importance that was going to win any kind of awards. Right. And that changes with Annie Hall. Yes. Every film after that becomes Oscar worthy and important. But Annie Hall was the transition film of that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. You know, the guilty pleasure films are they may be low budget or they may not be, but they have something in common. And that is that they have heart. Mm -hmm. They have a, they're well written. They're well acted. They may be simple. They may be low budget, but they have heart and they address the audience and they capture something. Right. Even though they weren't necessarily meant to be a big blockbuster Oscar winning, you know, film. I will give you mm. one of, of those kinds of films, low budget. That is nothing what you described <laughs> and made <laughs> gobs of money. And I absolutely hate it, by the way. I'm going to say that right off the bat. I hated the film. But it, I, I can't deny that it made tons of money. And that's the Blair Witch Project. Oh, Talk yeah. about a oh. horror film that's a guilty pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, but that really, that that was really uh, in a whole new world of an independent with handhelds that had just never done before. It was pretty, pretty, in the, it was not a studio. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that you put that in a category with snakes on a plane. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm with you. I agree with. I'm not. You're not going to get an argument from me. Yeah. Well, okay. So like at all, but you got to remember that the whole horror genre was built on the B-list idea. You know, that's I mean, true. Except for that's Frankenstein true. and okay. Dracula. Let's go and back to some other, guilty. Every other horror film of the Universal was Let's a come back to picture. To yeah. some guilty pleasure, Bridget Jones. Bridget Jones. Good. Bridget Jones. Okay. Yeah. 
as uh, who was the, uh, the uh, Julia Roberts and uh, the no, guy that's in not, England? That's not Julia Roberts. No. Was, no, 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 no. No Julia, saying, no, Julia what, Roberts. What that's was Renee the one with Zellweger? <laughs> no, no, no. I know that, but then uh, I'm talking about another version with Julia Roberts and uh, the guy who was on Johnny Carson for having uh, slept with a prostitute or something. Uh, and Hugh, uh, Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Uh, and they had a whole thing about uh, uh, she was a big star coming to England. Uh, how, how could you get? Uh, and he worked for the Nottingham Horse and Hound uh, yeah. uh, magazine. So anyway, there are a whole bunch of those are sort of like rom-coms, but they really are more guilty pleasure. You go into just to, to enjoy them. That's true. Three weddings and a funeral. Guilty pleasure. Yeah, yeah that yeah. was fun. No, you, you've got it. You've got it covered. And, you know, quite frankly, God bless those guilty pleasures. I mean, in my my mind, the big blockbusters of the summer are now just guilty pleasure popcorn movies. The important yeah. movies that really don't draw a lot of people, but, but are important during the Oscars. Those, to me, are the important A-list films. But, you know, maybe I have it backwards. I don't know. I might. So just keep that in mind. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to, I would like to say, to be totally on the record, that, and I'm speaking for John as well, our guilty pleasure is having conversations with you about all things Hollywood. Well, if you're saying that I haven't won an award for any of these conversations, you're right. So <laughs> yes, I guess I would be a popcorn guest and a guilty pleasure. So yeah, I agree yeah. with you. <laughs> Manny, as always, thank you. You bet. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.